So I really just wanted to create a bright, fun, nod to the 70s, bit of an alternative design to just really hit a different note and give some awesome inspiration. Hello lovely couples and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, wedding planner and owner of Bluebird Creative. I provide a weekly dose of wedding planning goodness for the modern couple. So if you haven't already guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell so that you'll be notified every week. And obviously come and follow us on our other socials, Instagram and TikTok at bluebird underscore creative, where we're creating more tips for you, giving you loads of value. Um, particularly on Instagram, we are showing you behind the scenes of running the business, my random, raw, and sometimes, you know, real chats. So, uh, so definitely come and join me over there. Anyway, guys, let's jump into this week's video. This is the part two. So if you haven't watched part one yet, I will link it up here for you now, where we talk about this really fun wedding design that had a nod to the 70s, it was super bright, super fun, had some sustainable aspects because we had a shed load of plants and a couple of DIY projects thrown in as well because we wanted to show you guys how you can still have DIY elements in a really cool wedding without it looking kind of too hand done. Anyway, I absolutely love this process and I cannot wait to show you the process from literally going from I've got this idea in my head to a mood board which looked a little bit of like this and then to actually going to a shoot that looked like this. So let's dive in. Okay guys, so when we're creating a design, whether it's for a shoot, for a brand, for a wedding client, it doesn't matter. We go from having ideas in our heads and having discussions with whoever it is that we're working with to then needing to create the actual design. And we create a mood board or for Bluebird, we create our design book. Now, this is exactly the same as the design template book that you can buy on our digital shop, which I will link for you and in the description below. It's exactly the same one that I use and I just take the template and then I create it and adapt it and tweak it to fit the brand, the couple, the client and the actual design that we're building. So I'm actually gonna show you, we're gonna do a screen recording now, and I'm gonna show you the process from going from this idea, which was essentially having something alternative. We wanted bright colors, we wanted it to be fun. We were working on a marquee site. So we wanted to showcase how this venue could attract clients that wanted a marquee wedding, but perhaps weren't like high-end luxury, were like good budget, wanted good design, but just wanted to be a little bit different, have details in there, have some DIY elements in there, show a little bit of sustainability. So there were all these kind of thoughts and processes that went into building this mood board. I'm now gonna show, show you the mood board and talk you through sort of my process of how that worked. And then we'll talk through how you then go from a mood board to actually taking it into the shoot itself. So let's go into my screen. Okay guys, so this is the shoot mood board design book that we created. So we started off by calling it Groovy and Wild and it actually ended up becoming called Wild For You because we thought that was a bit more relevant to weddings. Um, it was a collaboration between us at Bluebird Creative and Bespoke at Littleton Manor Farm, who were the venues. They were the ones that contacted us and asked us to come on and design, um, to collaborate on a shoot with them and, and to do the design and concept and help plan as well. So when we're creating, we will put the date and the venue and who the shoot is for or who the wedding is for and like a title or something some usually it's the couple's name but for a shoot we obviously titled it and this is just kind of like an inspo page so this kind of gives you all the juicy kind of like inspo of what you're about to see so as we move into the second page then we go into the color palette page so these were all the bright vibes that i wanted to pull in like proper kind of like emerald tones like really like kind of sexy deep colors but with big pops and they all just looked so so gorgeous together so we give a little like breakdown of what the colors are the textures and kind of what everything's going to do so we've got dual tones 
talking about plants, no flowers, sustainability, and so on. This is just kind of giving a bit of a vibe that we wanted kind of like lounge textures and then lots of plants and neon lights. So it's giving you, again, a bit of an intro. Then, again, another inspo page, just, again, to sort of show you all the different textures and things that we're looking at within the shoot. So we're just pulling all these inspo images together and giving some ideas of what the shoot is going to pull together. So groovy and well, bright jewel tones, neon pink, velvet lampshades and seating, tassels, paper decor for sustainability, plants, not flowers for sustainability, animal jungle vibes, disco balls. Now, obviously this develops throughout the process. These are literally, this is where we started initially and you'll see how we go from this mood board through to the actual shoot. Um, and it's really interesting coming back and looking at this mood board now and kind of seeing how that developed. I was absolutely obsessed with this wallpaper at the start of the shoot. Like literally, I was like, I want the whole thing to work around this wallpaper. Flower styling. So again, we fill this in. We talk about the types of plants that we wanted to incorporate. The fact that we wanted it very plant heavy. Then we go into the bouquet. So obviously we wanted some flowers. So looking at fun bouquet, bright pops of colour to match the colour palette, abstract shape to feature some soft and some structural flowers such as orchids, etc. So we really wanted it to be quite modern, quite fun, really poppy alongside that sort of huge greenery aesthetic. Then we added a page in here for extra moments where we're talking about just sort of some fun key kind of backdrops and things. So we were talking about um, a table plan with impact, which as you'll see, we definitely created that. Funky seating area with signage, great styling, a great entrance walkway, bubble confetti, which we never got and I'm absolutely gutted about it. I ordered these epic bubble guns to get a confetti shot and they never turned up and absolutely devo, um, but hey ho. Uh, roller skating disco, we had actually talked about creating a roller skating disco, which in the end we didn't do because it just felt a little bit too extra for a shoot, but I would be so here for it for somebody's wedding. If they didn't want an actual disco, have a roller skating disco, it'd be amazing. So again, just some inspo pictures to kind of pull together the ideas of what we're thinking. You know, who said disco balls were tacky? These look bloody epic. Bridal attire. So we were just sort of talking through some of the fun, funky ideas. that We'd want two outfits, one kind of more party and fun for the evening and one sort of a little bit more boho 70s vibes. Bridal hair and makeup, obviously like big blowout, pinned back hair, like really lush. So unfortunately we weren't able to get a white suit, but I think what we did manage to create in the end with the groom's retire really fitted the bill still. We pulled in the teal colours, we had in a pocket um, hanky in the colour, we had some really funky teal croc platform loafers which kind of brought all the fun vibes and actually really fitted in with the theme but this is where we started which was super fun stationery we were talking about wallpaper we were talking about neon colors sort of like fun just bright out there stationery ceremony ideas so you can see here that we were talking about sort of creating a ceremony spot with disco balls maybe some neon lights you know like chairs plants lining the aisle can be repurposed um, if no lighting, disco balls. So again, we're just writing down kind of the ideas and setting the scene. Table decor, we use this page to kind of go into detail with what we wanted to create. And then we started laying that idea here. So again, totally obsessed with this wallpaper. Disco balls over the table, candles, plants, all the bright colours. Cake, we were looking at kind of, I think these are called shag cakes. So bright colours, sort of funky textures, really cool designs. So as you can see, we really started with a fantastic kind of like inspo to then send over to all the suppliers. And then let's talk through what happened next. So guys, I hope you loved the design book and the mood board there. It was an absolute labor of love and I loved pulling that design together. And I have to say that when I then started reaching out to the suppliers and sending them the design book to say, this is what we're working from, this is the brief, would you like to be part of it? The excitement levels from the suppliers that we approached was pretty high. So that was amazing. And everybody that we reached out to was just so excited about pulling this brief together. So the next stage, and this again, so this was for a shoot, but this applies if you are planning your own wedding, it's the same thing. You wanna have your mood board, you wanna have your design book so that you can send it to your suppliers and say, this is what I wanna create. It also helps you approach the right suppliers to fit your brief. So the next stage for us at this point 
was to then look at the brief and decide, okay, who do we need to create this? So we knew that we needed a florist. We knew that we actually wanted a plant hire company because we thought that that would fit the brief better and was more sustainable. We knew that we needed a calligrapher, but in terms of some of the DIY elements, for example, the table plan, I created that. The shoes, I created that. We knew that we obviously needed to reach out to the right bridal companies. We knew that we needed amazing photographers and videographers to fit the vibe. We knew that we needed a marquee company, a lighting company and so on, like decor company, props that could have the right items and the right style to fit the brief. And that is what's absolutely key, what you won't, don't want to do. And this actually applies to couples planning your own weddings. This applies to suppliers that are doing your own shoots if you're trying to create something to fit your brand. It's the same. It's understanding a brief and it's pulling the right suppliers in to fit that brief. What you don't want to do is reach out to a supplier that then doesn't actually fit the brief. So for example, that cake I mean, I'll show you the actual cake that we create, but you can see from the mood board, the cake is pretty epic. I'm not gonna reach out to a classic kind of traditional style cake maker that does a lot of fondant with white, beautiful sugar flowers or any sugar crafting of flowers or anything like that, because that is not gonna fit what we're doing, okay? The, I'm just trying to think of a different like stationary style. So for example, I wanted really bright poppy stationery. So I reached out to Stacey because that is what her brand is all about. I'm not going to reach out to somebody that does really, again, elegant and white and soft and romantic because that was not the vibe that we were going for on this particular design. So it's a case of lining up who fits what I want to create for my wedding day or for my shoot or for my brand event no matter what it is that is how you pull a design and take it through into the project you have to pull the right team in we managed to do that and i won't lie i am so so proud of what the team pulled together it was one of my favorite shoots the images the video i absolutely love them and obviously we got a feature on green wedding shoes which was amazing to get um and I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. So I'm going to show you a little montage now. If you haven't already seen the first video to this, I'll show you a little montage now of some of the images that we got from the shoot. And you'll see, hopefully, how we went from the mood board and how we interpreted that ourselves and took that into the shoot. So I hope you enjoy the next bit of the video, guys. Leave me some comments below. Let me know what you thought. What elements do you like? What are you doing for your wedding day? How are you pulling the design through? Don't forget, guys, if you need a design book, then we do have the template in the shop. So go and check that out. Until next week, guys, have a good one. See you then.